So, one time, I managed to catch the Pokemon Tower Marowak. You know, the ghost one. Usually it'll slog off any Pokeball thrown at it. Out of curiosity, I tossed a Master Ball at the Marowak. If you're wondering, I had hacked an infinite number of Master Balls at the beginning of my Pokemon Blue save for the sake of convenience. It was the equivalent of an airplane read in terms of Pokemon game playthroughs, so I didn't really care. I was expecting the game to break immediately upon capture, since the Ghost Marowak probably works differently from your usual Marowak caught in the wild. Nothing happened. However, the game went on just as planned. It appeared in the last slot of my party, seeing as I had yet to add a sixth. At the very least, I expected a sort of missing no type issue but the game appeared to have treated it as a normal level 30 Marowak. It wasn't even a ghost type. Even if you fought ghost Marowak in game, it never is a ghost type. I had always wondered what would happen if you did manage to catch the ghost Marowak. This all happened as gold and silver were being hyped for release, so... I was only an innocent kid with an overused game genie. Since then, I've found out that using a cheat device to catch the ghost Marowak will leave you with a real one. Although the only thing I used a cheat device for was the infinite master balls at the beginning, which makes this catch even more peculiar. I was satisfied with the Pokemon, of course. Nothing in particular happened, so I completed my business at the Pokemon Tower and went back out to Lavender Town. I expected, with all the hype, something to finally happen in Lavender Town. The music didn't seem different at all, and upon talking to everyone else, I concluded that all was well in Pokeland. I healed my Pokemon at the Poke Center like normal and went along on my merry way to Saffron City. I didn't notice it until later, but the guard at the gate didn't just let me through. He was gone. Anyway, uh, Saffron City was free to roam, regardless. Now, in continuation of the game's plot, I made my way to Silphco, only to discover again that the place was empty of the usual rocket grunts on every corner. In fact, the whole city was empty. Pokemon Gym? Empty. I visited the routes just north and south and west of Saffron. Empty. I didn't notice how devoid of trainers Route 8 was until now. I shut the game off in a foolhardy attempt to return to my previous save before the Pokemon Tower. It sucked because I remembered I was still in Celadon City. At least I had beaten Erica and gotten the Rainbow Badge. So all I had to do was leg it back to Lavender Town and do the Pokemon Tower all over again. Without catching the Marowak, of course. All was well. Uh, the NPCs were intact. Nothing showed telltale signs of being glitchy. I accidentally walked into the grass on Route 7 in my haste to quickly finish the Pokemon Tower again. It was the usual Pidgey. Only this time, I sent out the ghost Marowak. I checked my party. Apparently, every Pokemon had fainted except the last Pokemon in my party, which happened to be Ghost Marowak. My items were gone as well. The battle choices were fairly standard. Fight, Pokemon, item, and run. I tried to run, but it wouldn't let me escape. So, I had no choice but to fight. Ghost Marowak had your standard moves. Growl, Bone Club, and Leer. Bone Club, being a ground-type move, could not hurt this Pidgey. And when rolling through the move choices, I found that the cursor could select the seemingly empty move slot. I selected it, and the game froze. The music fizzing out into that itchy, static sound as if I had just pulled out the game during play. 
I tried the game save again, this time checking my party before leaving Celadon City. My other Pokémon were knocked out cold, with the only healthy Pokémon being the Ghost Marowak. I checked its status. Once again, typical Marowak. The only weird thing was its lack of a trainer name. A thing I didn't notice before. It didn't say question mark or anything. It was literally just blank. Naturally, I went to the Poke Center to heal my fallen comrades. It didn't work. For one thing, it acted as if I only had one Pokemon. The other thing was that my other Pokemon were gone. My PC boxes were empty, and my first Pokemon was Ghost Marowak. I didn't know if this was some cruel programmer prank, but it couldn't have been a hack seeing as my mother bought the game from Toys R Us. This was way back in 98. Was it the fault of using a cheat device? Seeing as Pokemon Blue was always my sandbox game, and Pokemon Yellow was my serious game, I trekked on into the wild blue yonder. I left the Poke Center. As far as I knew, all of Kanto was empty. Hell, the only thing constant must have been the cheery 8-bit music. Going back into the Poke Center wouldn't work, and I would just hit a wall where the door should open. Pokemarts functioned like this too, though I could get into every other building normally. I couldn't get back into Erica's gym since I needed to use HM Cut, which I no longer had as my items went along with every Pokemon I had but Ghost Marowak. I should mention how I never got a nickname prompt for Ghost Marowak. It's not wholly important, trust me. It was just named Marowak. If all the NPCs were gone, I wondered about the Pokémon. Once again, I ventured into the grass on Route 7, and after a few eerie steps, a battle began. A wild Cubone. I sent out the only thing I could. Run was disabled. Item was useless. I picked Bone Club. It was a one-hit KO, seeing as Marowak was several levels higher than Cubone. I returned to the overworld and took a step to get the hell out of that grass, only to immediately encounter another Cubone. I defeated the Pokémon as they came, finally making it out of the grass. I was only about six or seven tiles in, but having so many wild Pokémon encounters one right after the other was just... uncanny. I continued towards the West Saffron Gate until I managed to get into another wild battle, away from the grass. Cubone again, not surprising. This even happened inside the gatehouse, and by the time I reached the eastern saffron gate that led to Route 8, Bone Club was down to zero PP. With no items and no way to get into Poké Centers, the next battle I would have was interesting, to say the least. Anyway, it was another Cubone. It was only then that I realized that each and every Cubone I had fought so far had the same level as the last. I already made the obvious connection of Cubone to Mother Marowak, but this revelation stung. I sent out Marowak again, feebly using Leer and hoping to just spam the moves I had until I could only struggle. Leer lowered Cubone's defense accordingly. Cubone at last had a chance to attack back, but it couldn't. It was too scared to move. I checked Marowak's summary again. It was still a ground type, and the battle would stall with Marowak using Leer or Growl and the Cubone being too scared to move. I was tempted to flick the power off and restart, but I let the battle drone on until Marowak could only use Struggle. Or, at least I had hoped it would have struggled. I recalled the game-breaking hyphen move I used earlier, 
and used it. Marowak used Bone Club, oddly enough. There was no reaction or effect on Cubone, but Marowak apparently fainted. Suicide, I guess. Its HP bar and name disappeared, but its back sprite remained. There was a sudden sound as if Cubone fled, though nothing on the screen indicated anything was happening. Suddenly, Cubone's HP bar drained and it fainted too. There was no message boxes saying either of the Pokémon fainted, but at last, the battle technically ended. The screen turned black, and I expected to be brought back to the start menu, but no dice. In fact, the game was hanging at this black screen. I waited a few minutes if anything might happen. Eventually, the black slowly edged away, revealing the Pokémon Tower's first floor. Though, of course, the NPCs were gone. The in-game menu was disabled, and all I could do was walk. Eventually, I made it up the tower and walked to the place where you encounter the ghost Marowak. There was no music, making the place even more eerie. There was an item where you would find Mr. Fuji as he was being held hostage by Team Rocket, though. I went to see what it was. The usual item acquisition sound played, but there was no message saying what it was. My menu was enabled again, and even though the cursor rolled through every selection, the only thing that ended up working was the trainer card. I named myself Bender, by the way. And as you can imagine, it was pretty torn up. The faces of gym leaders were ruined by random patches of numbers and letters. The usual border corrupted by various in-game tiles. My name wasn't Bender anymore, becoming a random line of letters and numbers. A couple letters of my new name were actually NPC and Pokemon menu sprites. The amount of money I had appeared to be a lot as the row of nines ran off the screen. It was a mess of unused and used data. I pressed A again, hoping to just get out of that thing. Seconds after, I realized I was missing the typical trainer sprite. It appeared moments after I pressed A. No, it wasn't some disembodied red sprite with blood all over it. It was a Marowak sprite. Even though... Every pixel of this sprite was in its right place. It looked a little sadder. I pressed A again, only to hear the desperate sound of its cry. The next day I tried to see if the game save could be salvaged, but the only thing I heard upon continuing the game was the Marowak cry against a dark, formidable background. I didn't play Pokemon Blue for a while after that. A few weeks after that, I lost the game somewhere in my room. Haven't seen it in years. I've since played Fire Red, and though I know there's no way in hell that kind of crap can happen in the remake, I'm still uneasy battling that Marowak. Regardless of the newfangled everything that came with this version, I can still hear the glitchy 8-bit loop of a Marowak in mourning. <laughs>